Hey, good morning. Today is Wednesday morning, July 20th, and I'd like to give everybody a little uh, tour of what's going on in my front yard. I really should be doing these videos more often and documenting what's uh, blooming and what's not, but I'm not much of a videographer. Well, let's get started. Uh, again, we have uh, three species currently blooming uh, in my front yard. What you're seeing there is uh, black-eyed Susan, and that's specifically Rebecca fulgida. And then moving over, we have uh, prairie coneflower, and that's been busy with bees and a few butterflies. Moving down, not yet quite in bloom here, is showy goldenrod. Uh, that should be coming in, in the next uh, several weeks. Down here near the curb, we still have some common yarrow that's blooming, but uh, that's pretty much going to seed. And I've been doing a little bit of editing. Uh, I don't want this to go to seed as much as it, it does. It's a pretty uh, uh, strong spreader <laughs> by seed and rhizome. So I... Uh, Pull, uh, I pull the flower heads that uh, go to seed. I'll only leave a few for the birds. Then uh, down here we, I put in a border of uh, prairie drop seed. And in most places that's coming in okay, although I have some spots uh, right in here that's a little thin. This area on the south side of my lawn, I'm uh, watching closely. It's under evaluation. Some of the things are doing well. Some of the things are not doing so well. Uh, up front here, I have a uh, gray goldenrod. Uh, that's uh, still working on. That's not quite uh, a healthy patch in my estimation. It's in its uh, second year for the most part. Most of them are in their second year. But I've uh, just planted some uh, new ones this year. So I'm trying to fill that in. In the middle, we have a smooth blue aster right here. Uh, that's also in its second year. And then uh, along the curb, I have uh, uh, plant leaf coreopsis. That didn't come back uh, well this year at all, so I'm wondering uh, what happened to it. I did uh, go ahead and plant more plugs in there that I winter sowed, so I'm going to watch uh, next year and see if it comes, uh, comes back strong. If it doesn't, I'll probably uh, interplant uh, something more dependable in that area. Here's my butterfly milkweed. That has already bloomed and is gone. It's a, it bloomed for just a couple weeks, generally pretty short. Uh, some people have reported it blooming a lot longer in their areas. I think it may be because this whole area is battling uh, for uh, some uh, part shade with the overhead maple. I think all this stuff would probably benefit by a more direct sun. On the other side of my lawn, uh, I'm not having uh, quite so much concern. I, again, the showy goldenrod's coming in real well. We have some uh, New Jersey tea right there. I uh, have a fence around that protecting it from the rabbits. And then over here I have sky blue uh, aster. That seems to be doing well. That's in its second year. I've uh, planted some more uh, winter sown plugs this uh, early summer uh, in bare spots. I'm looking forward to those growing in. As we move closer to my maple tree, I've basically let whatever can grow that close to the tree amongst the roots uh, successfully. I've let that go. You see there I have some uh, more uh, Rebecca fulgida that's found its way there. Um, I may or may not let that go. I don't know. It's in a place that I don't want it, but so far, it's not bothering me. 
My yard, both front and back, are uh, certified wildlife habitat by the uh, Wildlife uh, Federation. In here, we have uh, wild columbine. That has already bloomed and gone to seed. I also have, uh, as I'm using as a green uh, ground cover, uh, our common violets and wild strawberry. Here we have nodding onion. Uh, that is the flower heads are just popping up there right now. There's a small patch here and I've also mirrored a similar uh, planting over here with a small patch. That is a cone flower that uh, found its way here from someplace. Again, it's very close to my tree. It's found a niche, so I'm uh, letting that go. On the north side, the shady side of my property, uh, things are doing pretty well. The brown you see there is woodland phlox. That's one of the early blooming uh, plants in my yard, along with the common violet. Uh, there's nice shades of uh, purple that uh, complement each other. Looks really nice in the spring. Uh, but that's uh, gone to seed and gone dormant. So I won't be seeing that probably until next spring. Along here, I have a healthy stand of uh, zigzag goldenrod. Behind that, I have uh, gray goldenrod here. And then I have blue wood flocks uh, along the uh, street half of uh, my uh, property here. And those will all be blooming together later this summer uh, and fall. In here, I once uh, started this as a rain garden, but it's become more of a water retention area. Uh, I have water runoff coming from my neighbor's drive as well as my house here. And I dug a swale behind here that leads into uh, this rain garden here. This is American Spike Nard here. Uh, I chose that because uh, it does well in shade and it, I like the leaf shape. Um, you'll see the uh, droops starting to form there. Uh, they'll flower and then uh, have uh, purple seed groups from, uh, form later on in the fall. Uh, coming up my path, I have more zigzag goldenrod right here. I have a lot of common violet in there. Uh, there is uh, wild ginger, and that's all kind of mixing together. I also have woodland phlox uh, down here that's gone dormant. On this side, I have a mix of uh, geranium maculatum coming over to the uh, Canada anemone here. This is uh, a cultivar, a service berry cultivar called Autumn Brilliance. It's from some of the uh, old landscaping I had here. I'm going to keep that because it's uh, it's a cult, it's a hi hybrid that does occur in nature. Uh, between the two species. I cannot think of the two species right now, but uh, it does occur when uh, these two spe uh, in areas that these two species occupy, so they cross-pollinate. But I'm keeping that because, again, it's uh, a value. Uh, berries are a value to the birds. Walking back over here, I've uh, planted a row of uh, carrots as a border around here. And this is uh, Carrick's uh, Sprangelli, or Long Beach, Beach Sedge. Behind here, I'm, uh, I replaced a uh, yew hedge right here, Taxus uh, yews, with a bush honeysuckle. This is in its second year. I had uh, uh, someone gave me some uh, divisions last year that I planted so it's still uh, it's still growing into the space and along the back here I have some Virginia creeper that was uh, deposited uh, on behalf of some birds I have that growing in my backyard uh, around a tree but it's found its way uh, all over my yard 
but I like it so it stays. Up here is still some uh, what I call legacy landscaping. Uh, boxwoods right there. We have some uh, Korean uh, lilac bushes there. And then we have the uh, ubiquitous uh, Japanese maple. At some point in time, I will replace these with uh, native shrubs, but uh, that's probably a season or two away. Uh, this uh, Japanese maple is kind of blocking our view, so that's going to be the next to go. But again, uh, this is my front yard. If you have any questions, uh, please hit me up. Thank you.